tak, 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 Hello, welcome everybody. Today we are in Leiden in Unicum and we're going to explain to you how to hit your smash faster. And we're going to start right now. Big it. Ah, lekker booty! like it. You like it? Good match. The reason that you don't have any power in your smash is probably because you want to hit so hard that you actually play slower because you want to hit with power instead of with technique. Before we start, this technique that I'm going to explain to you in this video is in the continental grip. If you don't have the continental grip, as some of these tips are not correct because like the contact point is different if you play in the forehand grip or in the continental grip. The continental grip is this, to have the V on the left side, what I would highly recommend. I think the trigger finger should be loose because this will help you to be relaxed. Your thumb should never be on top of the fingers because then you're going to use too much strength. So what I would recommend that it's like a little bit loose because if it's very tight, very close to each other, you're going to use too much strength. So it's better to be here and to be in this angle because if you are here, you don't have the wrist to generate power with. So it would be better to be here. And what I would recommend is to be slightly lower when you have time. And if you're very comfortable, you can do it even lower. When I do the kick smash, I, I put more the, uh, the back end grip and even lower because then my wrist is very loose. It will help me to flick the wrist and that will be like 15% extra power. And with this, I have less range of motion. I prefer to be there. Every single Monday at 15 minutes past seven, Amsterdam time, we post a new video. So in this video, how to hit faster by using technique instead of power. I will also explain on how you can actually train that specific movement that you need in order to hit faster, because maybe with you it's the underarm, with somebody else it's the jump, with somebody else it's the yo-yo effect, uh, with somebody else the kinetic chain is not in order, so I will explain a few things in how you can hit faster, and I would recommend to use one or two in order to improve your technique, and then next week or next year you take another one. Oh, tip number one is to blow out or to grunt when you smash and maybe that's weird but if you do this or you do sorry this is for the youtube video because if you blow out you relax your muscles and you actually play faster so in the beginning if the in the intro i explained that if you use too much strength you play actually slower because if you use a lot of strength you will use less of the kinetic chain and less muscles. So if I'm gonna pressure a lot on my racket and I'm gonna hit fast, you can see that my underarm is not flexible. And if I relax, I have a relaxed wrist, I have a relaxed underarm, I have a relaxed shoulder, and I can play way faster. What I would recommend is that you practice this in a, in a friendly match first or in a training, that every time you smash, you do when you hit the ball, or when you hit the ball. It's for a film view. Tip number two is the correct contact point and correct where you hit the ball in the racket, because you will play slower when you hit it here or there. You actually play faster when you hit it a little bit higher. Uh, and also where to hit the ball, because if you hit it more clean, you hit way faster and what is important that if you do like this exercise, that you hit it like high and maybe slightly in front of you. Many players, they hit it very far to their side. So this is actually why they play slower because it's, it's not so comfortable. You will actually play faster and get the ball higher if you are more here. Or this could be a very good exercise for you to do to check where you are. So now I hit it on the top. If you can see, so this would be a very good and powerful smash. So I like exercises where it's very clear 
if you did it correctly or if you did it absolutely terrible. So then you can see like, okay, I'm doing this, but the ball uh, is there. Uh, I need to hit the ball high on the racket. Okay, I did it, but I hit the ball here. Okay, I have to be more there. So maybe I should make my swing smaller to hit it more clean, and then it will actually play faster. If you are scared if you hit the, uh, your racket against the glass, then I understand that. But uh, if you do it with an older racket or with a Kevlar racket, it doesn't matter so much. Tip number three, rotate your body. Many players have a very open stance, like a lot of volleyball players, maybe some football players. If you are here, you don't have a lot of power because your shoulder is next to you. So what you should think of is to be more here. So my back is against the fence. This will be a very good exercise for you to do, to learn how to rotate your body when you smash. So when you are here, you throw the ball. Oh, sorry fence, sorry tactical paddle. So I will be here and I rotate. But it all starts with rotating my left shoulder to my target. So if I play in that corner, my left shoulder would be here and focus on the left foot. The left foot should aim to where I want to play. Because if I have this closed stance, I cannot use my hip, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Tip number four in how to smash faster is the 90-90 rule. Many players cannot play a fast smash because they are here, so the elbow is too close to the body, or they, they have a, a straight arm, or they don't have this racket drop, what you want to have. So the correct motion is to show everybody your biceps before you hit the ball. If you're going to be lower than 90, you don't have a lot of power. If you're gonna be higher than 90, you don't have a lot of power. So 90 degrees here, 90 degrees there, and then from here, you want to drop the racket. So it will be slightly less, because I'm going to be here, but it's, some people they have done 90-90, but the racket is coming from high, then you don't have a lot of power, so you need to have this one. So 90-90, drop, up. That was with a little bit of spin, 90-90, so it would be very good exercise, maybe somebody tosses you the ball and you already wait with the racket up, 90-90, and bim salabim. Yeah. Tip five, move the hips. Uh, very important. So this is one of the first things of the kinetic chain. And the kinetic chain is, if one of your muscles like the hip is going and the moment your hip is fast, the rest will take over. So it's hip, first, boom. And it has to stop moving. So to hit as fast as possible, you don't want to do this. If you do this with the step, the rest of your muscles will not take over. So I'm not a fan of this, but that's more my personal opinion. So what I would recommend is to be here, high, rotation. Your left foot should aim at least to the net. So when you smash and your left foot is facing to the camera, you're never going to use your hip because now I'm, I'm stuck. So if my left foot is there, I can move my hip and then the rest of my muscles can take over and accelerate. So this is why power is not important, but the kinetic chain in the correct order is important. And there are not a lot of male players that use the hips correctly. If you don't use your hip, so look at this motion, it's just the arm. And the arm doesn't come from a relaxed motion because it's not powered up by the hip. So if I use my hip first, look at this motion. I have crazy amounts of power. So it's here. so much easier. So focus on the hip. My contact point is slightly further to the right now, but that's because I'm further from the net. Try to do the golf swing, what I would recommend. So it's this toes in the ground, 
or when you smash and you jump, that it's the horse kick. This is what I used for my tennis smash. This was my weapon in tennis. That when I was serving, that I kicked back. Because now I have a lot of hip rotation. So the rest of your arm is super relaxed. And you hit so powerful. Tip number seven, the jump. And you can use the jump to have a loose body to get a lot of energy from the ground because it all starts actually with the force you have on the ground, which we call ground reaction force. So if you're playing on ice, you don't have a lot of ground reaction force because you're not stable enough. So what I would recommend is for players that have a good timing to start jumping, for players that don't have a good timing to not do any jumping, because jumping and timing is sometimes not the best combination for everybody. So if you want to jump, you have to focus on when you jump to kick the right leg backwards. So it's the horse kick. If you do like the kick smash, you would jump more up because if you do that, you generate a lot of vertical motion, which helps you to get more rotation. Now we want to play as fast as possible. So it will also be good to jump into the ball. So to hit it more to the net. So you can see that I'm actually playing a lot faster now when I'm jumping because the rest of my muscles get this whip effect, this little puppy. Tip number eight is the cartwheel effect. And what is the reason you want a cartwheel effect? Many players, they don't have any cartwheel effect. And the cartwheel effect is something that makes your ball go more from high to low. And it generates you a lot of power. If you don't have the cartwheel effect, you're probably going to make a mistake because your ball is going to float. This is when I'm not having the cartwheel effect and this is when I have the cartwheel effect. And then you can get a top of the ball and you can generate a lot of power. In order to train this, you should toss the ball up for yourself and catch it and then hit the ball because you, you need your left hand or your right hand, depends if you're left or right handed, to get this vertical motion. So when you use the cartwheel effect, you put more pressure on your chest and this will be something to generate a lot of power from. So we used to think back in the day, like as we looked to tennis 50 years ago, that you needed to have a round swing to generate power. Now it's something that we call from pretension. When you play a tennis forehand, you want the, the, the male players are now here and they're playing it from the tension of their chest not from a circle. This is with the smash as well, that if you are here, you put a lot of power on your chest and you're like getting the power bar up. So if you have like a power bar, you know, like a download thing, then if you are here for a longer time, you're generating power, 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 and then bam! So now I have a lot of power because I'm here and I'm putting pressure on my chest, that's where you get the power from. Tip number nine, hit the ball deeper. So this is not really a technical advice, but if you hit the ball very short, let's say before the service line, your ball will slow down because it bounced then it's gonna hit the glass, then it slows down. If you hit closer to the glass, which is more risky, you will have more power and your ball will be more complicated to block because then somebody has to volley or smash. That's quite a difficult challenge or like half volley. So only do this if you feel comfortable enough with your smash. If you maybe missed a few smashes, just aim for the shorter smash around the line. Tip number nine, uh, the correct racket. The correct racket, there's not a racket that I would say this is the best racket for smashing because it depends on your style. 
But personally, I have a playing with the round shape now. The round shape is not the fastest racket to play with. So sometimes I play with the El Toro from Tactical Paddle, which is more teardrop shaped. Even if you go to diamond, it is easier to smash faster because the top of the racket goes more into the ball and it's more top weight. So you can generate more power by using a racket where the weight is in the top. So that would be a, a teardrop shape or a diamond shape. So with round, you have less power and with diamond shaped, you have more power. With this racket, the tactical paddle with Kevlar, this is with 3K carbon. So this is the racket I play with now, is with 3K carbon, which is the hardest possible surface. So if you have 3K, you can hit faster than somebody that has a racket with 18K or 12K or 6K carbon. So if you want to play faster and you can do this perfectly, <laughs> which is probably not the case, you can go for a harder racket. The weight of the racket is also important because it's too heavy, you cannot get a relaxed, fast motion. So if your racket is like 375 grams, in my opinion, that's too heavy because it's very hard to have this quickness in your uh, swing. So what I would recommend is to aim for something between 360 and 365, 370 maximum. The more overgrips you put on the racket, the more the weight comes here instead of there. So many of the World Paddle 2 players, they use just one grip because then the, the weight of the racket is slightly more on the top. So these are also tricks that you can use to hit a faster shot. If any of those tips helped you today, it would be so nice if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. We really want to have 40,000 subscribers at the end of the year. So 37 at the moment, venga vamos. So the final tip of today is for the people that watch the end of the video, which is you. So then you really want to become good. So for those people that are the true vamos squad, um, the yo-yo effect. I spoke about it once in a video, but the yo-yo effect is the best method to get everything in order and to hit as fast as you possibly can. This is a timing struggle for most people, but if you do this well, you're gonna destroy everybody. So the yo-yo effect is the moment when the top of my racket is down, I should jump. That will help to get the kinetic chain fluent. So the moment I am here, I go up. So now you have to jump on the correct moment. So to the end of today's video, we're going from worst smash to best smash. So I smashed a lot today, more than one basket, and I don't feel anything in my shoulder. And that's because I, today I focused a lot on being very relaxed and to get everything with the kinetic chain. So bum, boom, bum. And then you don't hurt your shoulders so much. So I think if your hips are relaxed, your shoulder is not gonna be sad. Thank you all for watching and uh, see you in the next episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.